Now listen to this. This is mind-boggling. This is this is just too much. This is too. This hadith is too much. As in, it's so powerful. If you were to reflect on it, you should, you know, maybe faint. When Allah loves a slave, He calls on Jibreel. Who's Jibreel? You know who Jibreel is? The greatest of the malaika, as far as Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The one whom, when the Prophet saw, he fainted والسلام, because of his wings had covered the horizon. Jibreel, the, the angel who's responsible for the most virtuous thing, which is conveying the revelation from Allah to the messengers of Allah. Jibreel, and what do you know about Jibreel? Allah said, whoever is adu, whoever is an enemy to Jibreel, then Allah is the enemy to the disbelievers. Allah defended Jibreel in the Quran. Jibreel, Jibreel, the one who took the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Al Isra Al Mi'raj in the ascension to the heavens. Jibreel, the the the, the malak, which we we don't know what to say about because of his honor and his virtue in the sight of Allah. Allah will call on him to share with him the love which he has for you. Allah doesn't need to do this. He could, he could not do this, but Allah likes to do this. So he does it. He says, I love Fulan. Now I want you to think that Fulan is you. Whatever your name is, Ahmed, Mayrub, uh, you know, whatever your name is. Imagine Allah in the above the heavens, above the throne, in His greatness, in His majesty, which is beyond our human comprehension, calls out to Jibreel to inform him that He loves you. And then only that. فَأَحِبَّهُ Then He commands Jibreel to love you also. So Jibreel now loves you. Allah and Jibreel love you. But it doesn't end there. Jibreel then will call upon the inhabitants of the Sama. Who are they? All the Malaika. How many? We can even count trillions and trillions of malaika which Allah created beyond our, again, human comprehension. All of them are commanded simultaneously to love you. First, he says, Allah loves Fulan, so now you have to love him. Then all of the angels in the heavens love you. Then Allah will place acceptance for you on earth. So people will love you. Not everyone. You may be saying, why do I have enemies? People who love the Sunnah will love you. The people who love Allah and His Messenger will love you. The people who are upon the correct Aqeedah and methodology will love you. Other people may hate you because of a problem in them, not because of a problem in you. Because you may say, well, this, you know, this facet, this evil, this obedient person doesn't love me. Don't expect him to love you. He loves people like himself. Who will love you? Righteous people. Righteous people. Well, they don't know why. They don't even know why. They've, you've never even given them a dollar or a real or a pound. You've never done anything for them. Maybe you scream at them. Maybe you do with other things. It's Allah. Why? Because Allah had loved you first. Then Jibreel had loved you first. Then the Malaika loved you afterwards. Then Allah put acceptance for you on earth. So people have no choice but to love you. We ask Allah to make us among them. Now what better than that? What else do you want? What else do you want? What? What? If you are a person whom Allah loves, in every movement you go, you do, you pray, you sleep, you whatever you do, you are among those whom Allah loves and Jibreel loves and the angel loves. What else do you want, ya akhi? Your guaranteed success in this life and in the life to come. Guaranteed. No way Allah will punish you. No way. No way Allah will punish someone whom He loves. But the hadith doesn't stop. The hadith has a very saddening continuation, which we should seek refuge with Allah from. And if Allah hates a slave, He also calls on Jibreel. And He informs Jibreel that He hates this person. So He will command Jibreel to hate this person. Then Jibreel will tell the angels to hate this person. Then Allah will put hatred for him on earth. La ilaha illallah. Imagine you walking upon the planet, the face of the earth which Allah created, while Allah hates you, and the angels hate you, and Jibreel hates you, and the righteous people hate you. What a sad state for a human being. And when we could be one of those as well. 
If you are prideful, arrogant, you are qualified for this hatred because Allah does not love kullu mutakabbirin uh, jabbar. Allah does not love the arrogant, the prideful. If you go against the sunnah, then Allah does not love those who go against the sunnah. If you don't observe taqwa and you don't observe ihsan and you don't observe tawbah and tatahur, then again we are disqualified. If you, many things which we can mention, many things which will bring about Allah's hatred and deprive, of, deprive us of Allah's love, it's a very sensitive situation, meaning right now, right now, you have to be one of these two. Either Allah loves you or He doesn't. But there's always good news even for those people whom we can be amongst. It's not too late because you're alive. It's not too late because it's Ramadan. It's not too late because you're breathing. Even if you led a life of someone who had attained Allah's hatred, if you were to return to Allah, then Allah will love you and be happier. He will be so happy with your tawbah than a man who lost his mount in the desert, upon it was his food and his drink, and then he waited under a tree for death. And all of a sudden he opened his eyes and he sees his camel or his horse or whatever that was right in front of him. And he gets so happy, he said, Allahumma anta abdi wa ana rabbuka. Oh Allah, you are my slave and I am your Lord. Kufr. He said a statement of kufr, but the Prophet said, Akhta'a min shiddatil farah. He made a mistake because he's so happy. You know when you're so happy that you may say things against what you want to say? When you're so happy that you just, you know, you say words that mean nothing to anyone? Allah is happier when you return to Him than that person. What else do we want? For how long are we going to stay away from Allah? For how long are we going to lead the life of the heedless? For how long are we going to go against the sunnah? What are you waiting for? Death? Death. Until when death comes to one of them, you say, Oh Allah, allow me to return so that I may do good. And that which I left behind, and it will be said to him, No. It's only a word. It's nothing but a wish and a word he will have. It will not be fulfilled. Let us not wait for death, ya akhwan. If each one of us here, by Allah, by Allah, if each one of us here acted upon the sunnah, lived according to the sunnah, and invited people to the sunnah, and enjoyed what is good, and forbade what is evil, wallah, we will make a major change in the city in which we live. And if Muslims here this all over the world had that same attitude, then we will change the condition of the whole ummah. So no enemy can come and play games with us. We will squash them, all of them, because Allah will defend. In Allah, yansurkum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum. If you aid Allah's deen, Allah will aid you and will keep your feet firm. But we don't even live according to the sunnah, let alone be given victory over the enemies. So we've been humiliated in everywhere we go in the world. So let us make that change. Now that Ramadan is here, now that you've been given this, this, this sudden inclination towards good, if we don't succeed, if we don't take advantage of this month, wallahi, we are losers. If Ramadan ends and you are the same way you were before Ramadan began, then one of us is a loser. If we don't return to Allah after Ramadan, then we are losers as well. So tonight, bi'ithnillah, always on our mind, attaining Allah's love, acquiring Allah's love, fetching for the sunnah and acting upon it whenever we're able to do so.